Hello, everybody. This is Dustin Perrier with my bi monthly Autotask office hours, and I'm just setting everything up. Um, just to a heads up, we are going to be doing a re record. So, on the last one, um, apparently there was a, a major issue happening with the recording, and I think it's because that computer was dying. I do have a, a replacement computer now. Um, always convenient as an IT person to get a new computer up and running. So we should be good to go this time. That said, if anybody has any issues um, with the recording, by all means, let me know during the webinar and I'll work to correct that. Typically it goes along swimmingly, but uh, webcasts are generally live. And so sometimes things happen. So what I'm going to be re-recording here, because it was difficult for people to see what was happening, is the second phase of our integration series where we're going to integrate Autotask with a third party software. And what I've been using for my examples are um, integrations with Teams. So let's go ahead and tackle that. I'm going to move some screens around. Great. And so what I want to also do is uh, make sure my screen is shared, and I believe it is. And uh, again, if you have any, any issues um, seeing my screen, just let me know. Let me just reshare just to be 100% sure. And here we go. So you should now be seeing Autotask. Again, Dustin Prayer, Giant Rocket Ship. This is the Autotask Office Hours by Monthly Webcast. So one thing, uh, we do post these to YouTube. Uh, if you want to go look at the many, many previous episodes, by all means, go look at that. The other thing is at the beginning of this, I do like to discuss any new um, updates with Giant Rocket Ship. This webcast is absolutely available to everybody. You do not have to be a customer of ours. Um, but I do like to take a minute if we have any big changes. One thing that we rolled out, it is now currently in beta. So it's not available to all of our customers. So if you're seeing this and you don't have it available to you, reach out. We'll add you to the beta. Um, but um, we control ticket assignment and scheduling. Uh, for your service team. And a really cool feature we're, we're slowly rolling out is not just uh, automated ticket uh, scheduling, but project task auto scheduling. It's a really cool tool. So yes, you can use Kanban boards and these other things to manage your, your task and, and when they're worked, but is that kind of defeating the purpose? Like if you set a task to be started on the 3rd of March, why don't we just automate the process of getting this the technician to work on the third. And so um, instead of uh, um, having to just focus on work on managing the project task and the scheduling, we can now fully automate that for you. So what happens is if you go into scheduling and notice it's not a main menu item right now, because again, it's in beta. Um, we're going to go and see how this initial beta is working. So we have a project auto scheduling module. You can enable it. And then basically it's going to use some predictions against the task. Who's the primary, the amount of time left on that task, um, the start and end date. And it's automatically going to spin up the scheduling for your technicians. And what's really cool is when they need to do additional work, you just need to tell um, Rocket Ship to, to reevaluate that task by updating the task status to some, to some status. We have waiting dispatch in this example. And so it really makes it very quick and easy. Uh, whenever you update the task of this, Rocket Ship will, within several minutes, go identify that task, look at the primary resource, see what their scheduling and availability is, slot out that schedule for the projects, and push it, though, to the start date of the task, which is one way a task is different than a ticket. And so it's very smart in that. And it's all configured here. But what happens is once you do this, you don't have to go create you don't have to go manage when technicians work on task anymore. Rocket Ship takes that over for you. Okay, so that is the auto scheduler. Just wanted to go over that. Now let's dig into the fun stuff here. What we're going to be talking about today is connecting auto task into Teams. So in the previous episode, we did that using make.com, which used to be called Integromat. And in this one, we are going to be using Zapier, another common um, integration platform. And so what I like to do is I like to kind of slog through the details of it so you see everything. There's not going to be any assumptions made here. And also I have my, 
<coughs> excuse me, my teams available. And so this is just a regular teams um, uh, tenant that we use for testing. And I'll be showing you this um, as we're as we're working through things, because there's actually a couple of steps that are in no way obvious and you will not be able to get it to work unless you see those specific steps because they're not really well documented. In fact, it took me quite a while on the first pass to make sure I fully lined this out where it worked exactly like I wanted. So the, the one thing to understand with Autotask, and it's logical, but it's not obvious, is that the workflow engine is what triggers events going from Autotask to a third party. And I'm going to show you how that works. So the first thing that you have to do is you want to set up a ticket call out. A ticket call out from, from Autotask is where Autotask tells some third party, and it doesn't matter who it is, hey, look, this ticket has been changed. Here's some, some high-level details of it. If you want more information, you can poll me via the API. What's nice about this is that polling for changes without this type of prompting is horribly inefficient. And so we're going to do this um, using the callout. And so you're going to have used a ticket callout if you connect Autotask to ConnectWise Automate or any kind of third-party tool that needs update. So this is probably old hat for a lot of y'all. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new extension callout. Now, I already have one set up, but I'm going to kind of walk you through it. So we would just call this Zapier, right? Now, what's happening here is I've kind of set this up for you, but we're going to walk through it. I first create <coughs> a webhook receiver in Zapier. Now, heads up, um, to use the webhook feature in Zapier, you do have to upgrade to what is essentially their pro plan. A little bit of a buzzkill. Um, and I will tell you, this is where I like Make over Zapier. It's actually cheaper, much cheaper to do this in Make than it is to do Zapier. If you want to use webhooks with Zapier, you're really going to incur some serious costs um, versus and for sure the free version. Um, and so uh, I, I like to pe push people to make, but if you're familiar with Zapier, this works just great. And so what happened is I created this, this um, receiver for a webhook and notice that here is the URL. Now you need to get this URL to Autotask so it knows who to call out to. And you can see here, see here there we go all right so you can see here and i've done this before is i took the web hack hook url and that's what this is right i'm going to copy this and i will have created um and we're going to delete this old example just for clarity um okay uh it's associated with the workflow rule we'll tackle that next but anyways what what you're going to see here is that i've created this ticket call out i just called it zapier because that's kind of obviously what it is. And then I put the URL right here. And this tells um, this tells Autotask, hey, look, when a ticket changes and the workflow rule fires, I'm going to send my data to this outbound URL. And we're going to make sure it's active. Um, now, the thing is, this doesn't actually trigger anything. This just sets up how Autotask will communicate, where it will send that communication to. And so whenever that workflow rule in Autotask fires and triggers this ticket callout, that ticket callout goes into Zapier. And notice in my previous test, because I kind of made sure I set this all up for you guys, notice a change had sent my ticket number, my status, um, whenever the ticket was created in the last activity, and the domain here for my tenant so that I could parse this out. And the reason it's going to send the tenant is that this again could be a third party and so i need to know who you are right so again this just sets up the communication it doesn't actually trigger the communication so what we're going to do next is let's see here one of my little task tickets so what we want to do here is to trigger this ticket call out when a change is made to this and then that call out will tell zapier do something with this ticket and typically um well for this example we're just going to have zapier notify teams 
that there has been a ticket change or a new ticket. So to make that happen, we have to use workflow rules. That's how Autotask triggers these things. And so I just ran and clicked the wrong button. Let's go to workflow rules. And so again, we have our ticket call out and we need some kind of forcing function to execute on that, on that call out. I like to na name my workflow rules, things that I can easily find. And so notice I have Zapier webhook and I create this, let's walk through what it looks like. Now we're gonna get to the team side of this in a little bit, because again, that's where things are not obvious. Now, what I did here was I like when I'm testing a workflow rule that does a, a webhook call out, I like to be able to just add a note to the ticket to trigger the workflow rule. But obviously you would you would disable this. And if you just wanted to get notifications on a created ticket, it would look like this. So Zapier webhook, whenever a ticket is created by anyone, execute this webhook. Send the data of that ticket to the third party when the ticket is created. Now, what's interesting is this is literally all you have to do inside of Autotask. Um, that's why it's, it's it can be a, a, a really simple process on the Autotask side to connect it to a third party um, using no code like Zapier, or Make, or uh, Flow. Okay, so now we have enough that Autotask will automatically fire into the Zapier webhook. So the rest of it is us configuring teams in Zapier. And that's where it actually gets more difficult. This, the Autotask side is not difficult at all. So what you're gonna do here, and this is where I, I like Make better because Make doesn't need all this. But in Zapier, we need to install the Zapier app in Teams. And then we need to go manually add permissions so that that app can update the channel where we want our message. Now, I'm going to walk you through that because, again, it is not obvious whatsoever. So what we did here is we went, we had apps. I've already added it. I, you can just find it in the app store. This is not rocket science. Now, when you add it here, you're going to think it's ready to rock and roll. It is not. So what I found in my testing was I kept trying to send it to my team here. And this is a, a personal chat, but you can just as easily have it do a... Um, Let's see something real quick. Okay, this was the cleaner version. And so I tried to make it a little bit even easier on you guys. And so send channel message in Microsoft Teams. So the other one is the example of sending a chat. Now in this one, what we're doing is we actually are going to edit. Um, we're actually going to send a message to a channel in a team rather than a, a direct chat. And so I just felt like uh, the second version I created was better. Um, so look, we're connecting to Teams. Now, what's interesting is that connecting to Teams here does not require the Zapier app whatsoever. And this is where it's going to get confusing and where you need to be careful. Notice that I'm connecting to this team and to this channel. And always use Markdown. It's the best, right? It's easy to format things. And notice I uh, parse out the data coming from the webhook. When you do this, it will not work. And that's important to understand. When you try to send this message, you're going to get an error that Zapier does not have permission to that channel. And you're going to fight it, and you're going to look at the channel and try to figure out forever until you realize, after you read a bunch of documentation like I did, that just because you added the app doesn't mean that it has access to anything. And so what we actually need to do here is, and this is where it's not obvious, we need to go to the, is it about, let's see here. Let's see if they moved it. Let's see. So it was here last time. Let's go find it. And so 
I think you might actually have to go here, which is even more confusing. This is it. Okay, this is why it was so difficult to figure this out. You can you not you don't even go into the app in your teams. You have to go to the app page on the store first. And then what we're going to do here is you would think it's permissions, but no, this is just an overview. You actually have to get go to the down arrow and click add to team. Not obvious whatsoever. Then you're going to click type of team or channel and then you're going to set up the bot so that now has permissions and access to that channel. And you're going to need to do that for every specific channel you want your Zapier sending updates to. So again, um, not sure about you guys, does not seem obvious to me at all that you'd have to go to the app store, not the app itself. Go to this and then do the down arrow to figure it out. But that is how you're going to have to make Zapier work with Teams. Now, once you do that, I'm going to show you the magic of it. And you create a new ticket. This is what you're going to see from, from um, Zapier. Notice all these examples I have. New ticket, status new. I could have included the ticket number, the title, these other things. But I tried to keep it really simple. New ticket, status new. And if I click here, it's going to open up the ticket and auto task directly out of Teams. So what's nice here is I didn't need to buy any third-party integration um, to connect Teams other than the no-code platform Zapier or Make or, or in my next episode, uh, we'll be using Flow. So that is how you can connect Autotask with Teams very quickly using the Zapier platform. Again, Dustin Perrier, Giant Rocket Ship. This is uh, an episode of my bi-monthly Autotask office hours. And in the next episode, I'll be doing the same thing, but with using Microsoft Flow. If you guys have questions, by all means, send me an email. I'm at Dustin at GiantRocketShip.com. Everybody have a good day. Thank you.